Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us. In this segment of Health Professional Radio, we'll be speaking with Steve Kent, Chief Product Officer at No Labs Incorporated. He's joining us to talk about the company's next stage in the development of No Labs proprietary bio RFID technology. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Steve Kent, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure, Neil. It's great to meet you and great to be on your show. Glad that you could join us. Tell us about yourself. Tell us about No Labs, what the company does, and your role there as Chief Product Officer. Yeah, happy to. Um, So I'm Steve Kent. I'm the Chief Product Officer here at No Labs, uh, and I've actually been working in medical devices for over a decade. Um, I also spent some time in the health and wearable industry and have learned a lot about how to take R&D programs um, all the way through research and development and productization, uh, and then into successful commercial launches. So very excited to be here at No Labs, which is a technology company that has developed a very cool new sensor. Uh, and we call the sensor BioRFID. And the purpose of this is actually to be the world's first FDA-approved non-invasive glucose monitor. Tell us about this device, uh, what it is, the type of platform that it, that it uh, is, is compatible with, unless it's compatible with all platforms. Um, how does it work? Just tell us all about it. Yeah, happy to. So, um, you know, at, at our core, we're a technology company. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're a technology company that has developed a new sensor. Uh, and the way that I like to describe BioRFID as a sensor is, is it's actually quite similar to the concept of LEDs, um, but we have overcome many, or, or I, I think it's hard to say all, but the vast majority of the limitations that optics and LED-based systems have in measuring human health metrics. So if you think of an LED, um, we're, at, we're at the level of, you know, when they invented the LED, that's how profound that this, technolo- this technology is. And what we do, similar to an LED, is there's a transmit and a receive. And we send um, electromagnetic electromagnetic energy in between those two points. And we measure what happens in between that distance. Uh, And it just so happens that radio frequency, um, you can actually programmatically control in our system up to 400,000 different frequencies. So it's similar to having the power of 400,000 LEDs that can see, safely see through a concrete wall uh, in the size of a couple of quarters. Uh, and it turns out that the radio frequency signatures, um, when they safely pass through the human tissue, are highly correlated at identifying different molecular signatures in the human body. Uh, and for us, we view glucose as um, an incredible market need with something around 2 billion people who are affected worldwide by um, some type of negative response to glucose, whether it be uh, diabetes or prediabetes. So being able to actually hone in and see glucose in the human body and its impact on the human body uh, is exactly where we have been developing our system. So that's the, that's the core technology is transmit, receive. We move electromagnetic, electromagnetic energy in the form of radio frequency between those two points, and we're able to um, overcome the limitations of that optics have encountered when trying to measure molecules. Now, of course, you mentioned not overcoming all of the obstacles, but uh, what was one of the major obstacles, one of the major hurdles uh, that you cleared during this stage of development? Yeah. So for us, um, you know, we have overcome many of the limitations um, that optical sensors run into. So uh, LEDs and optics, which are, you know, based on optics, uh, they have a very difficult time seeing through human skin. Uh, in different thicknesses of skin and different skin tones. Uh, LEDs cannot see through metal, for example. They can't see through different materials. Um, radio frequency can see at the right frequencies, can see through all of that, and, and it can do it all safely. So um, one of the big hurdles that we've overcome um, in the industry, which is in the past heavily relied on these optical-based sensors, is they just can't see deep enough into the tissue and the body. Uh, and then the next stage is that you need enough information flowing through that scenario to be able to discern what molecules am I seeing. Um, so LEDs are not, you're able to adjust the power level, but you're not actually able to change the, the wavelengths dramatically of LEDs. So if you want to change what you're looking for in an LED, you typically have to add more LEDs to your system, which over time can be quite big. It takes a lot of power. Um, but with radio frequency, programmatically through our control system, we have one emit point and one tr- um, receive point, 
And as I said earlier, we can send up to 400,000 frequencies through programmatic control. So it's similar to having 400,000, you can imagine 400,000 LEDs in this scenario, which allows you to capture so much more information. So the big challenges that we've overcome is we can see um, what we like to think of as the full cellular stack. So we're looking at all the tissue above the sensor. We're able to do that safely. And we're able to get many orders of magnitude more information out of our sensor than a traditional optical-based sensor. What are the plans for expanded research on this Gen 1 device look like so far? Yeah, so um, it's it's pretty cool. The, um, the sensor itself is actually the same sensor that we've been using in the lab for the last two years. So all of our foundational studies, um, all of our validated studies, our peer review studies have been done with what, what you could say is fully baked hardware. Um, the sensor, design, the antenna design, the RF design, that has all stayed the same. Uh, what we've done is we've now put that into a portable, extremely high power, um, basically a research lab in your pocket, which is what Gen 1 embodies. Uh, it takes all of the power of our lab and it puts it into a pocket-sized device, which lets us do two things. Uh, it lets us collect uh, an enormous amount more data because you can, we can build you know, dozens to hundreds of these initial units and set the footprint for even more scale beyond that. Uh, and it also lets us test the system in a variety of conditions because, you know, we can't have the 2 billion people with diabetes come to our lab and do data collection to, to, to set the system. Um, you need to understand how this product fits into someone's uh, real life. How are they going to use it in the real world? So that's the role that Gen 1 fills is being able to allow us to have a lot more of these units to collect high resolution bio RFID data with different types of glucose metrics. Uh, and then it also allows us to really understand the real world use for, for patients truly around the world. We're talking to many potential partners all over the globe. Are there any other uh, potential studies uh, with, I guess, different applications for uh, the bio RFID? Absolutely. Um, bio RFID is certainly what, what we call and what you would recognize as a platform technology. So, um, you know, as a, as a company, our core focus, and, and it really does take a lot of focus, it's to nail the application of non-invasive glucose for the billions of people around the world who need that today. Um, we feel that that is going to have a monumental impact in a positive way on human health and care delivery. Uh, beyond that, as I mentioned, we have programmatic control of 400,000 frequencies, our sensor overcomes the traditional limitations of tissue thickness that you'll uh, encounter with optics. So the data set is so rich and it's so versatile uh, that we have seen many cases in our lab where other analytes in the human body may be detected and potentially even other industry applications entirely, whether it be industrial applications, looking at liquids and solution. That's what we proved with the Mayo Clinic um, in one of our peer-reviewed studies where we looked at varying levels of um, uh, concentration in liquids with 100% accuracy. Uh, and then we also know that our sensor has a very high probability of being able to discern different analytes in the human body. So we've seen early signal for things like SpO2, alcohol, the presence of Tylenol. So we need to do a lot more research to really nail those other applications um, with our core focus, of course, being glucose now but the potential of the system is very profound. And once again, anchoring back towards the invention of the LED, when the LED was first invented, uh, you know, the or original team would not have been able to fathom the sheer number of applications that LEDs are used in today. Uh, and now they're all over the world. You have thousands around you at all times. So that's really how we see this technology and the role that it has to play in the world. Is there anything that you'd like to add for our listeners and, and then give us a website where we can learn more? Yeah, certainly. So for us, I think it's very important to recognize that um, as healthcare shifts from point of care and point of care solutions um, into continuous and fully integrated systems in your day-to-day -day life, we truly believe that glucose is a vital sign that everyone should have access to at all times, anytime that they want. So in order to get there, we're here to provide the world's first non-invasive FDA-approved glucose monitor. And we believe that viral RFID is going to be that precedent that allows more analyte detection in the home, starting with glucose, and then continue to expand its application use from there. 
Uh, and you can learn more about the company at nolabs at co. We have a wonderful page called our scientific and research validation page that we constantly update with all of our recent findings. Steve, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. My pleasure. Thanks so much for your time, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Steve Kent. Audio copies of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au, also at Anchor Spotify, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. Radio.